Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn ordinary glow-in-the-dark latex paint. I got this from Walmart. And I'm going to harvest the actual glow-in-the-dark powder from it. Doesn't get much easier than this. In order to do this, all you need is some folk art glow paint. I got this from Walmart. Some sort of a container and water. And all you have to do is just pour it in. And when you stir this up, the glow in the dark powder is heavier than the latex and all the paint and it will sink to the bottom and you'll simply just pour off the top. Give you an example of how fast it settles out. It's been about two minutes. And this is an ultraviolet laser. And you can see that most, if not all, has settled to the bottom. I'm going to give it another couple minutes and I'm going to pour the top of it off. Okay, it's had enough time to uh, settle to the bottom quite a bit. And I'm just going to pour the majority of this off and to keep washing this off, I'm just going to add more water back to it. You can see that there's no glow particles on top. And you may not want to pour this down your sink. I'm going to delete it so much that's why the sink is stopped up. It'll be fine. Notice the glue particles left behind. I mean the, uh, the glow particles. Okay, that's good for now. Let's fill this back up and start again. Notice how nothing is fluorescing. There's a little bit, looks like, in there. And the longer you wait, the more it'll uh, settle out of suspension. So let's give that another five minutes or so. Okay, so five more minutes has passed. I'm just going to go ahead and dump off the majority of the top again. Taking care to leave the stuff in the bottom behind. And that's the zinc sulfide. hard to leave it all back but since I still have kind of milky water I'm going to do it one more time so I can really see what I'm doing stir that again and let this sit for five more minutes the reason why you want to uh, take care and rinse it enough times and wash the the glow powders because if you don't and when we set it out to dry there will be some residual latex behind and it'll just clump it all together and you won't be able to use it as well. Okay one more washing and I think we'll be about ready to just let it sit and really uh, gather up the bottom of the bowl. So pour slowly when you're doing this. You just don't want any real uh, milky substance left behind because that's going to be your it's going to be your latex paint, and that's what'll clump it all together if you have too much of that behind. I'm going to stop there because I don't want to pour any down the drain. Notice there's some floating on the surface. I don't want to pour that away. Ok, 
Okay, one final washing and I think we'll be good. Okay, so now I'm just going to pour off the last of the water and then let it set to dry. I'll let it dry in this container. And that's all your glow powder. I'm going to let that concentrate to the center of that one more time before I pour the rest of the water off. Okay, after however many washings that was, I didn't count, uh, four or five washings, this is what you're left with. And I don't know exactly how much you'll get per uh, little bitty vial, but uh, as you can see, it's a... Uh, Pretty cool, and you can do you, it changes what you can do with this. You can put it in resins. You can make earrings if you're into that sort of stuff. You can, the possibilities are endless, and you get rid of all that milky white latex crap, and you can uh, you can really fine tune your application for your glow in the dark powder this way. Okay, so what you do now, you just set this aside, let it dry, kind of turn it over every now and then with a little piece of stick or a little dowel rod, and get it all good and dry, then you can put it in a plastic container with a lid or Ziploc bag and store it until you're ready to use it. Okay, something I wanted to show you, less is more when it comes to this stuff because if it gets too thick, you actually won't be doing yourself any favors by adding more. What I mean is if you're using it in resin or if you're using it in say a polyurethane top coat for a zombie gun or whatever you happen to be doing. I mean, I can energize this side and you can see and not really energize this side. It's so thick right there that I'm really only creating the glow on this side. So keep your applications thin. You'll save your product, it'll go further and you'll have better results. And after it's dry, this is what you'll have. You'll have kind of a lumpy substance and it'll depend on how well you've got it cleaned. But I think mainly my problem was I just kind of let it clump up too much before I started stirring it. All you have to do, and there's a little bit, I think there's a little bit of moisture left in it too, so. Just keep working it down and if you want to, you can put this in a mortar and pestle. I use a mortar and pestle for a lot of different uh, experiments that I do whether it be uh, grinding ammonium nitrate or milling down charcoal for that last video to make the German darkhead aluminum but that's what you have let this dry put it in a dry thoroughly so you don't get any kind of mold issue going on when it's uh, properly dry then just put it in a plastic bag or a sealed container Thanks for watching.